Hey, what's going on guys? This is gonna be a difficult video for me to make, so you know, bear with me. There's a lot of emotion tied behind the things that I'm gonna be saying. Uh, for those of you who don't know, some of you may have seen on Twitter or on Reddit um, or on my YouTube community post that I made the decision to leave Dignitas. And I just wanted to give you guys insight on why my side of things so that you guys can understand why I'm making the decisions that I'm making and just giving you guys an update on what I'm doing. So, you know, I guess we'll start from the beginning. When Dignitas first picked me up, I was definitely an unproven coach. I was a prospect. I was on Gamers Ready full time and I hadn't really proven that I could I could take a roster to being a top team yet. So yeah, Dignitas gave me that chance to prove myself and Violent Panda as well. He vouched for me pretty heavily. So, you know, shout out to Violent Panda for doing that. And I want to thank Dignitas for giving me that opportunity because it's been such a huge step in my career to go from coaching on Gamers Ready to having coached for, you know, Dignitas, one of the, the most known names in esports. I went from being this gamers ready coach to working with Violent Panda on Dignitas. When I first started out, they gave me the position part time and I was working part time and I felt like I had to prove myself with that position. So I was working way more hours than part time, but it was because I felt like I I really wanted to show that these guys that I could do what I said I could do, and that's take a team and and help them become a top tier roster in the world. So I, I was working really hard. Uh, I was putting in tons of hours, watching replays, studying opponents, studying our team, studying our players. Once I felt like I had taken this team of, of Panda, Astral, and Yukio, while I was working on that, while I was putting in so many hours on on grinding to, to make this team the best that I could and help them achieve the things that they I knew that they could achieve along the way made some of the best memories that I'm gonna I think ever make you know I'm gonna hold on to some of these memories for the rest of my life I got to go compete at my first LAN under Dignitas and that was DreamHack Montreal where they let coaches on stage for the first time and getting to do that in front of so many people in the crowd and in front of so many people on Twitch with one of the best teams in the world I felt like was just an incredible opportunity and I, I enjoyed every bit of it. And then, you know, obviously we went to season eight worlds and that was probably the most memorable thing I've, I've ever done in my life was compete at that tournament. So I've always looked up to Dignitas as an organization. Um, one of the first orgs that got me into esports, getting to do the same thing that I watched, you know, some of my favorite content creators doing competing at a world championship under that Dignitas banner was huge for me and Dignitas made that possible for me. And then after that, I got to, uh, we, we won our first European regional championship the, the very next season in season nine, again, under Dignitas. So it was just such a huge pivotal moment for me in my career being on this, this organization. They did so many things for me as an individual and as a brand. I got to go, you know, do events, meet and greets where I got to meet a ton of fans and Dignitas made that possible for me. And I'm always going to be thankful to them for that. I think things started going downhill after that because once we came third in the world at the world championship, and then we dominantly won our region the next season, I felt like I had shown Dignitas and everybody else that I was capable of being the best coach in the world uh, and capable of being a coach for the best team in the world. And after I felt like I had proven myself, uh, I felt like I would have gotten more support for the things that I wanted to do with the team and more support for the things that I wanted to do in my coaching. You know, I was working with uh, coders to create coaching tools for Bacchus Mod that I could use with my team that you know, I don't think any other coach had done at the time. And I felt like I, I was doing a lot of it out of my own pocket and struggling to find the support for doing those things from Dignitas that I wanted to do. And I think that's when I really started to feel like uh, I had to keep proving myself to them no matter what I did. It started to weigh on me. It started to make me feel like there wasn't much I could do that would gain me the support that I wanted to, to do the things that I wanted to do. I had a vision for coaching in Rocket League that I just, I don't think Dignitas's vision aligned with. I think my vision to build a top tier roster and, and develop them into the best team in the world, the way that I wanted to do it wasn't the same way that Dignitas thought it should be done. And I think over time that started to affect the relationship that I have with the people at Dignitas and it started to affect my mentality uh, and it created an environment that was just unhealthy for me for a little while. It just wasn't happening the way that I thought it would. And I think Dignitas, I started to realize had a different vision for the way that they think that a roster should be built and and the, the resources that they should have. So, you know, that being said, uh, I, I stuck around for a while because I like Violent Panda a lot. 
and he was on Dignitas. So to work with him, I had to be on Dignitas. So I stuck around uh, a lot longer than I think I would have if he wasn't on the team. And that started to affect my mentality and it started to affect my happiness. I, I, I was finding myself less and less happy with the environment that I was in. So I found myself in a position where I felt like uh, I couldn't stick around unless things changed right away. And I don't think that their vision lined up with mine to, to do that. So I had to demand more for myself. At the end of things, they, you know, I think they did right by me. They, they let me go out of my contract without holding on to me and, and forcing me to be bought out. It's just a sad close to a chapter of my career that, that I thought uh, would last a little bit longer, but here we are. So yeah, I'm focused on the future now. So moving forward, I'm super confident. I'm incredibly happy with where I'm at in my career. A lot of people are asking questions like, am I going to stick around in coaching? And the answer is yes, I'm going to keep coaching in Rocket League, hopefully the RLCS. Um, people are asking me questions about my team that I'm working with, and I can't give too much information yet, but I am super excited about my team. This team, I think, is is picking up right where I left off, and we're going to be, this, this is going to be the best team that I've worked with. We're going to be a force to be reckoned with for sure in the scene. So we're looking for an organization that's excited as we are about this roster. We're looking for an organization that wants to support us in the things that we want to do. And I'm looking for a team that's going to be supportive of me and the things that I want to do and help me to put out even more high quality content for you guys. That's something that's really important to me. So I think that you guys are going to be excited once these announcements come out. And I think you guys are going to be really happy with the team that uh, we're putting together and we're working, we're working on making the best team in the world. With all that being said, uh, for now, I'm, I'm working on private coaching on Gamers Ready again. Uh, I'm getting to work with you guys in my community more often, and I'm really enjoying that so far. And uh, at the end of the day, I really think I made a good decision for myself, and I'm really confident about where I am in, in my career and, and what's next. I guess it's just looking to the future for, for improvement, for more quality, for more content. Uh, I need to see you guys in my Twitch. Come on, come on over twitch.tv slash VergeRL. I'm streaming uh, two times a week. I think we're going to bump it up to three times a week here pretty soon. Right now it's Mondays and Saturdays. Uh, I'm going to be doing replay reviews on my stream, uh, gameplay, Rocket League gameplay. Yeah, I think the most important thing is that I'm really happy about where I'm at. I'm really happy about what's to come next. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to enjoy myself again with what I'm doing. I, I'm just, I'm just happy. I uh, I don't know I don't know how else to put it, but um, I can't thank you guys enough in the community for supporting me in doing what I do. If it weren't for you guys, I wouldn't be here. Um, so huge shout out to you guys. You guys have supported me in pursuing my dreams, and and you've motivated me to work as hard as I've worked and do the things that I've done. I love you guys from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for allowing me to be Verge, for allowing me to be Verge, the Rocket League coach, because I definitely wouldn't be able to do it without all of your support. It is time for a new chapter. Until then, thanks for watching. Yo, Verge, are you finally done recording the video? Yep. All right, let's get to work.